I, you know, because of the work that I do, which is often in those moments of dialogue with our community, in those moments where we're in a session and we're, folks are on that, that learning edge, right? And something that you're probably sort of working with too, is you actually talk to people who are, who are kind of going into that space, that emotionality can be a barrier. I think particularly for people, you know, I'm a, I'm a queer white settler, right? There's stuff that comes up for me in terms of, of you know, all, all that we know about um, you know, engaging in this work and there's no getting around, you know, Kevin and I work at a predominantly and historically white institution, right? So there's a lot of emotionality in a lot of different ways. I think one thing that's been important for us in some of our at least education work and, and specifically the anti-racism uh, education work is to help people understand that our goal is really simply just to give them context and tools for reflecting mm -hmm. on the world around them. And, and so specifically for white folks, right? I think, and, and I'll, I'll just be sort of sort of out there if I can, right, which is that often it's about helping them because they're hearing a lot in the world around them. Often it's really about helping them focus on the distinction of whiteness as an identity and whiteness as an ideology, right? And being able to make that distinction, giving them thinking tools and reflection tools to understand that difference of when you're talking about ideology, which is where a lot of it sits, is that you're really talking about those structures, right? Um, and, and what that means as opposed to who I show up as as a person in a particular way. Um, so I think that ideology identity kind of distinction can help white people in particular handle some of that emotionality. But I will say, because we do a lot of sessions that are sort of interracial, right, for Black, Indigenous, other people of color who kind of come into those spaces, it's often frustrating. And we try to do the best we can. I mean, frustrating is the nice way of saying it. It's hurtful. It's really hurtful at times. And so we do the best we can to spend time talking about the commitments that we're going to make to each other when we're in dialogue. And in particular, uh, we really try to talk about how we want to um, center, for example, black voices and sort of share stories of um, everyday resilience and cultural contributions and thrivance in the face of a lot of those obstacles, because it's stories, those are stories that don't get told. And those are stories that are often told from a white gaze and not actually centered on, on, on black, indigenous, Asian, Latinx folks, right? And I think that's been something, that emotionality is hard too. Um, and, and I think still working on what that looks like. 